Welcome to the latest video from the Watercolors Aquarium Gallery team, brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Today we're going to be talking about something a little on the super geeky side, but we're kind of super geeky around here, so that's okay. Taxonomy. Charles is going to kind of take lead on this discussion, but we're going to talk about taxonomy, <laughs> the classification of living things. Yeah. So taxonomy is roughly defined as the science of the study of how to classify living things. So I have this neat little board. Uh, the idea is in our recent Confishes podcast, we talked about species and how to define it and how it's a little fuzzy. And I feel like this, so this is called a cladogram, by the way. <laughs> this cladogram will help visualize what I'm talking about here. Back so you guys can see it a little bit. So, modern taxonomy is derived from Carl Linnaeus uh, working with binomial nomenclature, so genus, species, uh, Amphicreon, Percula. And then we quickly realized, oh, we need to go further than that, and then we started doing family order, class, etc. And then the second genetics came out, we were all like, okay, so we've got it. All wrong. That now messed we, everything up. <laughs> now, now we have infra orders and super orders and subfamilies, and it's all sorts of messy. Clades and complexes. Clades and complexes. They are different things. Um, so, this is actually derived from a specific study. We'll have a link in the description to that study. We'll cite it. Um, because they're using cladistics and phylogenetics to produce this cladogram. And so the idea is, if you look along this axis, each tick mark is five million years. Okay. And so each of these nodes represents a common ancestor from which they split off and became their own thing. So what is a species? Is it distance genetically, distance in time? Like, how do we measure that? So morphologically, the Achilles dios species in the Macaulay look very different. So then I included the rest of these on the board because, well, this is currently considered one species, but it's divergent further back in time than these two already recognized species. Same thing here. These two lineages of percula clump fish go back almost five million years. And then they form this node with what is maroon clownfish. And that presents some problems for the clownfish classification system. So, so genetically, a percula is closer related, more closely related to a maroon? Than it is to any other clownfish species. Well, except oxalaris, but they're, they right. group. So the oxalaris, oxalaris percula complex yes. is more closely related to the maroon complex than to any of the others. Yes. So that it messes doesn't, everything up. It messes everything up because <laughs> that means that, so in taxonomy, this would be referred to as, if you look at the Amphiprion genus, this is now a paraphyletic plague because they don't all have the same common ancestor anymore. So in order to fix that, we either need to get rid of the Premnest genus or put Ocellaris and Perculus in the Premnest genus because it would then make the Premnest and the Amphiprion genus monophyletic. What's the type of species for Amphiprion? I think it's uh, tomato plants. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so type species is the term that's used to describe what species was used to originally define that genus. So that would mean anything that doesn't fit the species, the, the type or the genetics of that fish aren't close enough, aren't related enough closely to that species would be in a different genus. Yep. Right? So do you know, has the phylogenetic study been done on the other clownfish to see, are they right? Is Macaulay and, and Chrysopteris, are they, do they still belong in Amphiprion? So for the most part, yes. This, 
actually came from a study that had a data set of like 50. I didn't want to do the, that entire board and have to explain all of it. <laughs> so I simplified it down to just a few nodes. But um, the data does seem to indicate that what if you were to remove percula oscillators from Antipan, everything else Everything else works. Everything else works. But even though we all thought the cinnamon clowns and the Macaulay clowns were really closely related because the Macaulay sort of just looks like a black cinnamon cloud, yep. we're wrong about that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and part of the reason this seems so complex and jargony is because it's difficult to organize something continually, so it just keeps getting more and more complicated as we try to come into that. It's almost like, like sorting things by color and you've got a blue pile and you've got a green pile and you find like one blue green and you put it in blue and you find another one and you put it in green. Eventually you need a blue green pile, right? Yeah, That's just right, sort of right. what they're doing here with trying to sort things into different things and then realizing that those parameters don't work when they get new information. Yeah. 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 Uh, additionally, trying to apply a method of categorization that works for clownfish, that works for couldn't come stratum, which is a freshwater aquatic plant, right. and works for monkeys and panthers. Yeah. Yep. Right. And corals. And corals. Well, and everything that's alive. Yeah. Right. So why do we care? <clears throat> it matters mostly for breeders. Okay. Because I feel like, uh, despite the fact that I'm not super into that part of the hobby, uh, riff like cichlid breeders kind of beat the rest of the hobby to that game, yeah. where they're like, well, it's the same species now, but that could change. So a lot of like really hardcore cichlid breeders will be like, it's this fish from this species from this reef at this time. And then uh, for like killifish breeders, they're even more precise than that. Right. Because that- Those genetics are changing that quickly. Our understanding yeah. of genetics changing that quickly. But well, well the, the genetics themselves the with, master, with killifish, the evolution of killifish is happening as we're, as we're collecting them. Yeah. Yeah. So those genetics are actually changing. So a uh, Epiplatus epipium from uh, that I believe is a Guiana fish. We're gonna have to double check that one. Uh, maybe Cameroon. Anyway, a West African uh, Epiplatus species, cichlid killifish, collected 30 years ago could very well have different genetics than one collected yesterday. And that's very true. So when it comes to breeding though, a lot of people are needing to make decisions based on, well, I have two pink skunk clowns. Are they, re how related are they? Are they related from the same reef or are they related to like four million years ago? And could they crossbreed with another species in that? I believe it's Leucocranus is one that, that they decided was just a hybrid, is that correct? Right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, between Christophorus and the orange skunk. The naturally skunk. occurred. Right? Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. This is the type of subject where you can really go down the rabbit hole. I mean, you can get 15 million years back into it, but it's actually more important to more of this, us than I think people think. Like, for example, if I tell you, hey, can you get me some of those green resboras? How many different fish can that be? It could be Microdivario pilotae, that could be Sundidanio goblinus, that could be, oh, what's the one that's related to the CPD that they call an emerald resbora right, sometimes? Right. Um, if you don't have the taxonomy for it, if you don't have its scientific name, we might order you the wrong fish. True. So that's a level that I think applies to all of us, even if you're not breeding, yeah. even if you're not, it's something that's important to be aware of. It's also, as like for breeders, I think provenance is gonna become more and more important because we're starting to understand relationships. So like, I have a pair of Feta Unimaculata collection locations sunk out. That collection location is very important because Feta genetics are being better understood and what is now Unimaculata could be Ocelot next year, but it'll still be collected from Sangata. So as long as I have that information, right. the taxonomy yeah. can change and I can backtrack it. Right. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it comes to things like Apistos and Curbensis and like the, and the public promise, I really should say, because yeah. those are shifty and they change like a lot. And sometimes they're not described, but if you get got the spot they come from, they may be the only one from that spot, even if they're not well described yet. 
those geographical barriers change the fish, yeah. change the organism. Yeah. Honestly, personally, I'm interested in taxonomy even less because it's useful, but more because I think it's kind of fun and interesting. It's like a secret code to right. tell you about your fish. Yeah. And you can sort of break down those Latin phrases, figure out what they mean, and that can inform you on certain things, where it comes from, or who named it, or, you know, there's more to it than just random Latin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you agree. Yeah. So, Charles, are you a lumper or a splitter? I'm definitely a splitter. Um, so I ascribe to the philosophy similar to uh, Pacific salmon conservationists, where they're like, maybe we should be measuring this in evolutionary significant units, not by species, because different rivers can be very different from each other, and most freshwater fish, that, that's going to be true too. Like each individual stream is a very different system. Sounds like it's a classic case of the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. Yes. Science turning sure. things upside down. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Charles. That's um, complicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd like to say I hope I enlightened people, but I, I think I just might have made it more confusing. Well, you know, that's, that's what text I'm going to It's a fun subject to dig cool. into, I think. I mean, it's a little bit dry, but, but yeah. there's a lot of interesting things. And maybe that'll explain why we're always sort of referencing scientific names or why we feel like it's important for, for you guys to know about it. Well, it's such a fun topic because we do this because there's so many cool different fish. Mm -hmm. We have to have some way to define those cool different fish. Yeah. What makes them different? Well, I think this is something we're going to have to get into deeper in a podcast at some point. So look for us on Spotify and iTunes and all those different places for our podcast where we do delve deeper into some of these topics. Keep this one fun. Try not to get into any fist fights with somebody who's <laughs> arguing taxonomy. Here's something and, you can uh, let us know. What is your favorite scientific name? Because there's some of them out there that are pretty fun. Scatophagus. <laughs> <laughs> you can look that one up. In the meantime, have lots of fun and keep those hands wet. <laughs>